here we go. Okay, hi everybody. Today we're going to be learning how to make the perfect blood smear. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with um, the hematology slides. They have a frosted end at uh, the bottom. Okay? And that's where you're going to be labeling your specimen. Today I'm not so worried about you labeling the specimen as just practicing the skill. But in the future, when you get your perfect slide, you're going to label it with two forms of ID. Okay? So in here we'll use the patient um, identifier or the name, if we don't have a barcode label, the, and the date, okay? and your initials. So I know who made the slide that we're, that we're looking at, and that gives me uh, that knowledge. So you need to use a pencil when you label the frosted end. Because of the staining process, anything else is going to wash off, even a permanent marker, okay? It, because we fix the slide in uh, ethyl alcohol, and that pretty much will clean anything off, any, anybody, okay? So what we're going to do today is we're going to put a drop of blood, kind of a small drop of blood, near the end of the frosted slide. So we're going to place a drop of blood there. And then we're going to take another slide, and we're going to come down at about a 45 degree angle, kiss and wiggle the blood so it smears out to the edges. And then we're going to push that slide, and follow through is really important. If any of you play golf or tennis, remember how follow through is really important. You have to take that spreader slide all the way through to the end of the slide. And what we want to end up with is a slide that looks like that. Okay. This is the part right here that we're going to use to do our differential and our morphology. So we want it to look kind of like a thumbprint on there. And this area around the edge of the slide is called the feathered edge. Okay. And if you hold it up to the light, it will be shiny. Um, that's good. Want to see that feather edge. And we'll get into the whys and the why nots a little bit later when we start looking at our slides under the microscope. But that nice thumbprint is what you want. Okay? Always, always, when you start to look at a slide under the scope, you want to scan on 10x. You want to find a good area where the cells are not overlapping each other, where they're just touching each other. Okay, and it's going to be right there. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my drop of oil on, turn to 100x or 50x in some laboratories. They have the nice um, 50x objective. And then when I start to look at this, I'm going to follow a pattern. Okay. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go all the way over to the edge of the slide, through the feathered edge, turn around, come back, go back other edge, turn around, come back. So I'm going to do that pattern. It's called a battle axe pattern. Until I reach my hundred cell. Now sometimes you're going to get kind of down into the slide. When you go to do your RBC morphology, you always want to go back to that good area where you started. And we'll learn more about why we're going to do that um, now. Now I'm going to go over and actually kind of with some blood for you. I've got my slides out. I'm going to put my gloves on. And I am right-handed. Okay. So, if you're left-handed, you just kind of got to do it backwards. Okay. My Kim wipes. I've got my blood mixed. And you probably only want to start out with about two at a time. So, I've got my paper towels. You want your frosted edge up, okay? And then you're going to take your blood, pop the top. Oh, you know what? I'll show you two ways. This I'll show you with a crit tube. Okay, this is just a plain crit tube. You just load up your crit tube, and you can just put a drop of blood right there, right there. That's about the right size you want. And then you're going to take your spreader slide. I like to hold it between my thumb and my forefinger. Prop up your slide okay, with your 
left hand and then come down at about a 45 degree angle and you're going to kiss and wiggle that blood and then you're going to push that slide through okay not the best you can use that same spreader slide okay kiss and wiggle and push it up okay kind of short let me show you another way and this is the way that I want you to do it here in class. These, we're going to use Diff Safe Blood Dispenser. This way you're not taking off the top of the tube. Oops, they're falling out. And they just look like a little helicopter. That's what I call them, helicopters. Okay. You just pierce cap with your helicopter. Get your slides out. Now, when you turn this over, it's not going to dribble. You need to apply pressure for the blood to come out. The more pressure, the, more. the bigger the drop of blood. Okay? So, little drop of blood, little drop of blood. Okay? And I'm going to take my spreader slide. Okay. I'm getting better as I warm up. Okay. Now I can change, in fact that's a pretty dang good one right there, I can change how long the slide is okay, uh, and how thick the slide is by doing a couple of things and let me show you. So there's three ways that we can affect the length of the slide or how much blood is on it. So the first one's pretty obvious. If I just do a tiny little drop of blood versus a big drop of blood. Okay, tiny drop of blood, what do you think I'm going to get? Short, short little slide. Yeah, short little slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, bigger drop of blood. Wom. I'm going to get a bigger slide. So you want to hit about midway. Okay, so size of the drop of blood will affect. What else do you think will affect the length of your smear? The shape of it? Not really. Whether you do the kiss and wiggle enough or... Kiss and wiggle enough? Okay. So here's another way. Okay, I got a, two drops about the same uh, size. Now, if I go really, really fast, if I'm nervous and I'm shaking, and I go really, really fast, I get a little teeny tiny drop of blood. Okay? If I'm calm and relaxed and laid back, kiss and wiggle, I can take that blood all the way out to the end, okay? Why would it be important, do you think, to have a technique where you can vary this? Hmm. Because everybody's blood is going to have a different thickness or viscosity to it. So we have to adjust our technique at times to get the perfect blood smear, okay? Which is what we're after. Okay, the last one I'm going to show you is the ooh, angle of the spreader slide, okay? The lower the angle, the longer the blood smear. So instead of 45 degrees, if I go down to, say, 25, I get a longer smear, okay? If I increase the angle, okay, like 90 degrees, I'm going to get a little short one. So that's the theory today. It really does take some technique, and Lauren and I will be walking around and making sure that you uh, at least are, have the idea down. Now, I do it one way. I don't care how you get to the final product as long as the final product is good. Let me show you just really quick another way to do this. And this is called the push smear. And I have a hard time with this technique. but. Okay, there's my blood. Okay, just leave it flat on your paper towel, and then you're going to take your spreader slide, and you're going to come up like this, still 45 degree angle, kiss and wiggle, and push. Not bad. Not bad. It's okay. Okay, any questions about blood smears today? All right, we'll get started.